So speaking of not changing, some people are asking, okay, we're going remote. How can we make sure that our kids stay connected to teachers and friends, whether that's in person, virtual, whatever, how do we make sure they're home with us all day? How do we try and get them some activity and engagement outside of mom and dad? Yeah. So staying to connected to teachers is going to be very particular to what your school is doing and what your community is doing. So it might be that your school has office hours. It might be that your school has time, um, like recess time where the teachers are there to facilitate some playing games. And I would really suggest that you have your kids go to those parts of their day, just like they're going to the academic parts. Because even if they're not participating, them having their camera on, them hearing their teacher, them seeing that they're talking about a movie or a game is really helpful for them to remember the humanness that we all have and need. One okay. of the things that's so hard about platforms like Zoom is only one person can talk at a time, right? So we've right. lost all of those side conversations just being like, oh my gosh, so good to see your face, hi! Because when I say that, everybody hears it and no one knows who I'm talking to. And I can't say that with, when you say it and when you say it and when you say it. So it's just me talking. So if there are opportunities for that, I would certainly encourage that. But that's going to be dependent on your school system or ask for it if they're not. I was about to say, or people, how would you suggest people advocate for that? Because I imagine PTAs and administrative systems in schools are super overwhelmed right now. But that's yeah. a great idea. So how would you recommend that people bring this up and try and approach, at, you know, proactively doing it? Okay. I don't want to put another thing on your plate, but I would, I would talk to your, your classroom teacher and say, you know, are you willing to, how do we do it? If they know the channel, great, run with it, or go to administration or go to PTA and ask, say, can we have a game night? Can we have a lunch and learn, right? Like what we're doing, well, it's not lunchtime, uh -huh. but you know, that kind of thing, our kids need that, right? In the, in the spring, I did a whole bunch of them for schools because kids needed to be able to connect in a not adult directed way. Or if yeah. it was, it was a game, it was social, it was fun. Ask for it, advocate whoever at the school you can talk to. And then if no one's doing it, get a class list and put it together for your classroom. No one else okay. is talking about it, be like, okay, great. We're gonna play Monopoly virtually um, on Friday at 4 p.m. So anyone in this class, come. So sometimes we have to do it ourselves. You bet. The other piece around friendship. We are at a place, at least in New York and in a lot of other places around the country where we can be a little more open. A little, there's a little more space, right? We're not in full lockdown anymore. So I would really recommend finding one or two or three families that are following the same types of protocols that you are following and expand your pod, right? Expand, I know the pod is a word being used in all sorts of ways, but expand mm -hmm. your circle. Let's call it that. So that you are now okay playing with this other family, having them in your house, you being in their house or their backyard and your backyard masks off so that your kids can have the experience no matter what age they are of actually being around other kids. Mm -hmm. Now, for your middle schoolers, that's going to feel really a little weird for them and they need it. Like middle schoolers are having the hardest social time out of any of the age of kids that I've seen because they're not fully independent. They were kind of finding their voice and they don't know how to do that virtually. So if you can huh. put them together in person to learn how to socialize in this powerful way. Is there any, uh, Jillian just added awesome ideas, Jillian. Drive by, scooter by, walk by, birthday parties are also yes. a great way to connect. I love that. Awesome one. Are there any, Dr. Mercy, since we have people with a range of age of kids here, can you do like a number one or top two recommendations for high school, middle school, and elementary school to connect outside of the school system? Yeah. So high school, let's go with them first. I would do a backyard barbecue. I would do a like, let's chill at the park. The high schoolers aren't going to want a thing. Like they're going to be too cool for school. If you're like, let's play Monopoly. Like yeah. they're just, they're not going to be into it. The girls, if you wanted to do a like, you know, let's get our nail, like, let's do our nails, buy a bunch of nail polish, everyone can have their own bottles so we can be, you know, COVID kosher and do that, that kind of thing. I'm going to be totally stereotypical just so y'all know in, in these examples, but you know, like give that for, for some of your more beauty aspire children for, for a lot of the older kids, they're also sitting around playing video games. So can we mm -hmm. have them do that together? Right. Or playing sports. 
been one of the things that's really hard for a lot of the guys. They just want to hang out and play sports. Teenage boys want to like go play basketball together and they can't. So are there kids that you can bring that together? For your middle schoolers, you're going to want an activity that is not a little kid activity, that is not too sophisticated that they lose it. So doing something like some of the games that are more sophisticated, like Trivial Pursuit or um, Settlers of Catan, like things that take a little bit of strategy but aren't crazy hard, they're going to be a little more into because mm -hmm. they're going to be willing to like, okay, fine, mom, I'll do it. But then they'll actually sit and it will give them something to connect around. One of the yeah. things that's hard is that they want to talk to each other and they're like, so what have you been doing? <laughs> I'm watching Netflix. What have you been doing? I'm watching Netflix. So we have to give them something to talk about, something to do. If you're willing okay. to have people in your house, having them get together and be like, y'all cook dinner, go for your, your middle schoolers. That'd be awesome. Little kids, you know, set up a hot, give them chalk and have them draw on the driveway, right? Let them be creative in that way. Let them get messy. So when I was a kid, my birthday parties were giant bubble parties. So we would make all, we would make a whole big batch of balloon, of, of bubble solution and then had like all of these different wands and like the big ones and all of that in the driveway. It is perfect weather for that. It's a little weird. It's out of the box. It's kind of creative. It's super messy, but it's really fun and different. So finding things like that, totally go have a bubble party. I did one in Prospect Park last week. It's so fun. <laughs> so things like that or your little kids also having them play um board games as well or even just playing cards go fish is going to go towards the i have to sit in one place i have to focus on what's happening but i'm having fun and being social which will help them with their school so we have that crossover there those are awesome